Okay, so you're in your garden and your garden is looking lovely and you're about to tend to your garden. But then you notice that there are some pests flying around or crawling on your plants. And in the tool pouch that you have that you're going to be using to tend to your garden today, you have diatomaceous earth and you know for a certainty that this diatomaceous earth will help you to get rid of the pest in your garden. So you say to yourself, yes, I have the diatomaceous earth. I can get rid of these pests. But then you continue doing whatever it is that you were doing in your garden and you did not apply the diatomaceous earth. You may be wondering, why am I telling you this illustration? If you stay tuned throughout this video, you will find out why I'm using this illustration. I'm White Davy, and today we are going to be doing a recap of the things that we covered during the month of November. And as we go through, some of you may have seen all of these videos, or some of these videos, or none of these videos. But they say repetition is the mother of retention, so the more you hear something, the more you remember it, and then when you need that information, it will be readily available right here for you to access. So, we started off November by looking at the soil food web. We talk about how plants secretes exudates, which is rich in carbohydrate, and this attracts put, sorry, this attracts bacteria and fungi, and these feed on the exudates. And after they're finished feasting on the exudates, then nematodes and protozoa feed on the bacteria and on the fungi. Then these nematodes and these fungi, these nematodes and protozoa store that nutrients in their bodies. They too became food source for other living creatures such as voles, millipedes, snakes, hair wigs, lots of burrowing creatures. Now, the soil food web just refers to the various organisms that live in the soil and how each of them feast on each other and by doing so they had benefits to your soil and to your plants. Now as these creatures such as the earwigs and the millipedes and you name it burrow into the soil, they create a healthy soil structure. This also include worms who help to create that health, healthy soil structure. Now as these creatures burrow into the soil, they're creating tunnels. What does the tunnels do? They allow for airflow, they allow for moisture to get down into the soil and for excess moisture to drain out of the soil. They allow nutrients to be able to get deep down into your soil as well. Now, these latter creatures that are born into your soil are also prey for other creatures who will consume them and drop their waste on top of the surface. Some of them will act as pollinators in your plants, such as birds. So they will help your soil in whatever category. Now, after we look at how these creatures are able to build your soil structure, we also look at worm castings and how it is able to benefit your plants. And we spoke about how worms are able, worm castings help with germination of your seedlings, how it protects your seedlings, how it also retains a good amount of moisture and strengthen the roots of your plants. It helps with plant diseases, controlling certain pests. It makes your plants grow faster, healthier, bet better metabolism for your plants. So overall, these are the topics that we covered throughout the month of November. Now, if you haven't seen all or some of these video or any of these video yet, then I so suggest that you go back and take a look at those videos because we go in depth on how a healthy soil food web will help you to have a very productive and beautiful garden. And that's what we want, right? I know that's what I want. I know that's what you want too. So then, 
What was the purpose of the illustration earlier of you having the diatomaceous hurt, knowing that it will get rid of the pest that you have in your garden, but then you don't use it? Have you ever heard the expression, knowledge is power? That expression is very true, but only if it is applied. So similarly, just like how you have the diatomaceous hurt, but if you don't use it to get rid of the pest, you don't get the benefit from it. In a similar sense, if you don't apply the knowledge that you gain and the knowledge like what you have had over the past month about building that healthy soil so that you can have that thriving garden. If you take the information and you're excited about it and you're happy that you learned so much, but if you don't apply it, then of what benefit is it to you? So my suggestion when I create videos, it's not about being on YouTube. It's not about sharing knowledge. Yes, knowledge is important. But like I said, if it is not applied, it serves no purpose. It's not about getting popular. It's not about making money. For me, when I share knowledge, my goal is to help all those who need it especially when it comes to living and not just living because we can live good lives, we can struggle through life, or we can get help from those who have experience in the field that we are endeavoring. And by getting that help, we are able to live a more satisfying life. And that is my goal to help as many of you as possible so that when you go out there in your garden and you're planting because you want to have nice, rich, healthy food for yourself and for your family. Now, my goal is to ensure that when you go into that garden, you're not working hard, struggling and trying to get through. But when you go into that garden, my goal is to ensure that you have enough knowledge so that you can get the full benefit from your garden without having to fight your way through it. So then, if you haven't seen those videos or if you have forgotten the information about that videos you can go back again and watch those videos if you have any questions you are free to contact me at any time and i will be happy to get back to you answer your questions and i hope you have a happy gardening experience now you may be wondering for most people the growing season has ended unless you live in areas where it is summer now or if you live in areas where you can grow all year round, then that's good and fine. But for a lot of us, the growing season has ended. And so you may be wondering, why am I putting out gardening videos, sharing all this information now? Why not wait until the growing season start? But where I live, it's approaching winter now, it's fall. It is very cold out there. Thank God I'm not in Saskatchewan anymore where it is frigidly cold, but it is still out there. I can't grow anything out there. Well, I still see brassica in my garden, not growing, but still alive. <laughs> but why? Why would I put out a video like this now? Not this video, but the videos that have been putting out for the month of November. The reason I'm putting out these videos now is for me, I don't believe the growing season ever ends. So even if I cannot plant something, I can still work on building my garden to what I want it to be. For example, if you have snow on the ground, you might not be able to put in a raised bed. Do you have compost? Can you, at this point in time, put compost in your soil and allow that compost to break down over the winter so that by the time your growing season starts, the nutrients would have been there the soil would have been amended and the micro population would have been growing over that period of time so that when you start your garden in the spring, your plants just take right off. Or do you wait until the last minute before the growing season and then you struggle to get your way through and you're rushing to get everything done so that you can get your plants in on time? so that you can be able to harvest them at the end of the growing season. So for me, preparing from now gives me that head start and ensure that I can grow my plants and harvest my plants before the growing season end and get the best outcome possible.
so as I share this information with you look for ways that you can apply them so that you can get the best result for your garden because what we're aiming at is being able to sustain ourselves right sustainable living is our goal so look for ways can you plan your garden what do you want to grow for the next growing season what type of seeds do you how many seeds do you have what seeds do you need to get where are you going to source these seeds are you looking for organic seeds or it doesn't really matter to you if you're looking for organic seeds and they are difficult to come by can you look for where you can source them during this time when there is nothing growing in the garden what type of pest issue did you face last year in your garden how did you deal with it was the result of your um, efforts beneficial or do you need to learn more so that you won't have the same issue next year so these are some of the things that you can do as your growing season ends so that when the growing season start next year you'll be fully prepared because as the good bible says the plan of the diligent one sure leads to success so plan ahead do what is necessary do the research gather the things you need and anything that you can get done now get it done so that you can have that amazing garden next year so thank you so much for watching and i hope you have yourself a wonderful day yaman yeah, time for growth